Welcome back to the Aussie Shed, ladies and gentlemen. In one of my recent videos, I had a little bit of a rant about uh, riv nuts and nut certs and all that sort of stuff, and particularly about the tools that you use to put them in with. And what I recommend as being the most useful version of all the different tools for putting riv nuts in with, which is this guy here. And I mentioned that the biggest drama with these things is you need a different size one for all the different riv nuts, and I really only use like four sixes and eights really and I've made other ones in different sizes this is one that I actually bought many years ago but um, unfortunately one of my mates saw the video and he's harassed me to knock one out for him so what I'm going to do folks is I'm going to turn one out for eight mil riv nuts which is this guy here uh, this one's a six and uh, I thought I might as well you know throw a YouTube video on and show you guys uh, how to sort of knock one out and how easy they are and how good they turn out. So, um, so I've just found a bit of mild steel round stock on the shelf just in all the sort of off cut section. And I'm going to just trim a bit off that with a bandsaw, throw it in the mini lathe and uh, you know, get to work on it. Bit of uh, another bit of mild steel. This one's gal or zinc coated or something. I don't know what the hell it's come from, but I'll just uh, do something with that. I might. Uh, I'll probably just weld her on the side of this, I reckon, will be the go. Just like this one, it's been welded on. A little bit fatter, but uh, that doesn't matter. And this is what we'll use to uh, drive the tool. And this is a 12 mil uh, metric high tensile bolt. And what we'll do with this is we'll cut it down and then we'll turn the thread down on the very end to match the M8 rib nuts. So I'll mark this and then go and throw it on the bandsaw and just cut it roughly to length. Length isn't super important on this, folks. You know, it's all kind of a bit of a roughly thing. So I'll just use our old tool here, folks, as a bit of a gauge. Uh, make it slightly bigger. Give me a bit of room to sort of trim it off and stuff. I know, so I want that one. So I'll put W for want. <laughs> all right, I'll go and throw this on the bandsaw. Folks, I've just got a collet chuck set up in the mini lathe here with a 25 mil collet in it. This is just a bit of 25 mil stock. So I will get this in like so. Actually, I'll take that right out. It doesn't want to play. Here we go. What I'm going to do, folks, I'm just going to drill the end out on this, and then I'm just going to run an 8mm drill bit through it, which is the size of our uh, our riv nut that we're going to be using, which is the you know the thread that's going to sort of do the riv nut. So the smaller hole needs to be 8mm, and the bigger hole needs to be 12mm. So we'll go right through with 8, and then we'll go to 12 to a depth. Like I say, we'll just clean the end of this up. And we'll be pretty good to go. That will do me, folks. Needs is just a bit of a clean up. I'll just chamfer this edge off.
So there it is folks. That's the body of our tool. Small hole in the bottom, big hole in the top. Let's head back over to the bench. Oggy doggles. So we're getting there folks. We're uh, we're at this point. So all we've got to do now is uh, cut this bolt to length. And then once we do that, we turn it down on the end, ready to accept an 8mm thread. So basically what we're going to create is the 8mm version of this. This being a 6mm, this guy will be wanting to be an 8mm. So you can see how it's going to go, folks. We'll cut it down a length, and we'll turn it down to accept an 8mm thread. And we're bloody nearly there, folks. It's only going to be a quick one today, folks. But the knowledge of how to make a very, very handy tool... We'll be here for the taking, folks. Alrighty. Let's cut this off and get her in the lathe. Alright, folks, I've just swapped over to a uh, 12 mil collet in the collet chuck. Throwing the bolting from the back gives me almost enough length, I think it'll do. Uh, we'll see if we've got to make any adjustments from here, but I'm just going to have to go right up to the face of the collet When I do this, but As long as I'm not silly, we should be good to go Alrighty Because I've got to go so close folks I'm going to have to set up a stop so I don't crash the bloody tool, which could quite easily happen with me at the helm. Right folks, that's looking pretty good now. It's down to the right size. And she's ready to put a bit of a thread on there. So I've just got a uh, an 8mm threading die in this little device here. And I'll just throw that in the tail stock of the mini lathe. And we should be bloody good to go. Let's see. That'll get me. So what this does, folks, is just a die. It's a sliding die holder. So as you start winding the the thread on, you can lock the tail stock down, and the die and the die just moves forward without rotating around. So you won't kind of strip it without having to unlock the tail stock, you know. So you can kind of uh, wind it on, but then it'll it'll sort of uh, take itself in. So I'll just start that about there. I'll just sort of get it started by hand. Don't you rotate on me. Just does not want to stay there. Now that I've got it started, folks, I think I might go and finish it off at the bench. Something going on with my tail stock here. There must be something inside the um, inside the taper there. Either way, it doesn't matter. Now that it's started, we know it's nice and straight. I can just finish it off at the bench. Alright folks, this shouldn't be too hard, now that she's all started, it should, should go quite easily. Not 
it should be that. That's looking pretty good now, folks. I'm um, I'm pretty happy with that. It uh, it seems to fit in our little unit here quite well, like so. Do our thing, and it's it's pretty much ready to go. Uh, bar welding the handle on. I had I did just slightly turn this handle just to get rid of the zinc coating on the outside, so I can weld it here. But I have thought of one more thing that I'd like to do before welding the handle on. And it's an issue that I've had uh, with the old one before is that it's quite bulky around the base here. It would be a little bit handier to get closer to an internal corner if this was tapered down a bit towards the end. But because it's got the handle on it, it's just a bit of a real pain in the ass to actually turn it back down again. You know? So before I weld the handle on this... I, um, I'm going to cut a bit of a taper on the end just so it's a lot smaller where the rib nut is just so if I need to I have more opportunity to possibly get it tighter into a corner um, you know I may never need that feature but at least if it's there I'll be probably glad that it is and uh, you know two seconds to turn it down on the lathe as I say once I weld the handle on I'm pretty screwed it makes it really hard to do so I might just throw this back in the lathe folks and um, turn this down to a bit of a taper so uh, I won't video that. I'll just go and do it, and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like. Bloody awesome. All right, folks, I'm back. There it is, as you can see. Just a little bit of a taper on the end there. Nothing, uh, nothing huge, but enough to, I think, just maybe add a little bit more flexibility and usability into the tool. So there you go. You can see, you know, what we've achieved compared to the, the bought one. So I think it may be potentially, possibly, be a little bit more useful in some situations. But, you can see it's almost there. What we've got to do now, weld the handle on. So, let's get the welder set up, get some tacks on this and weld her up. There it is folks, she's tacked together. So I'm all set up for a bit of welding, I'll just weld this out. Cool it down, we'll put it together, and maybe have a bit of a demo. Okie dokie. And there it is, folks. Hot off the welder. This thing's going to focus. All right, let's let it cool down and uh, we'll put the tool together. All right, folks, she's all cleaned up now. Looking pretty bloody flash. So, time to assemble it. Now, anything like this, when I assemble it, if it's something that you're going to be working at constantly, and particularly if you're going to be working threads, I'll tend to assemble it with a bit of anti seize. This is just a bit of your basic copper anti-seize. Use whatever you want. If you bloody don't have any anti-seize, just use a bit of grease or whatever. So, anywhere where there's going to be a little bit of pressure. So I'm going to put a bit of, I'm going to put a washer between the body of the tool and the nut when it goes down in on there. Or in down on there. Sorry folks, I'm a bit dyslexic. I tend to say things bloody backwards all the time. It's either because I'm dyslexic or Australian or a combination of the two. Alright, so a bit of anti seize on the thread there. Throw a little bit more. My washer's coming off. A little bit more on the bottom of the bloody nut. Alright, we should be cooking with gas, folks. Cooking with gas. Don't know what that means, folks. Cooking with gas, I guess it's a good thing. Maybe it's an old camping saying. Just one of the silly things that we say here in Australia. Cooking with gas. Works for me, though. All right, so we're all set up now, folks. We've got any seas. So we're not going to kind of, you know, put too much undue wear on everything as we use the tool. And I'm all set up, ready to go. And I've actually got 
a hole set up so we can throw a rib nut in and you can actually see it this time the last time I demoed uh, the existing tool here you couldn't really see the rib nut doing its thing but uh, I've got a little bit better a demo set up now so let's uh, let's crank this guy into a bit of aluminium eh so we'll just throw this in the vise here want it I guarantee the bloody camera is going to be in the way as it always is folks as it freaking always is all right that's probably not too bad but it's probably still going to be in the way all right so here's our tool got two 19 mil spanners here and we're about to get onto it I'll throw this one on the top the one like so just hang on to him there okay bloody camera's right me way folks pain in the ass i'll tell you and we'll throw that in there and hopefully i should be able to do this without belting the crap out of the camera ah uh, that on the wrong way all right, here we go. So you can see as we as we crank down on the the nut here, oh God, I'll pull this back a bit. As we crank down on the nut, it's starting to compress the rib nut. This uh, knurled section in here. If you can see it there, but it's uh, it's starting to compress. Oh, folks, this camera is right in my way. Anyway, you see what's going on? We'll just keep cranking him down. Once it gets a bit of bend in it, it starts to get quite easy, you know. At first, it's always the hardest, particularly with the other tools. So as you can see, we're not working the thread in the riv nut. All we're doing is working the nut down on this thread here. So basically, you just keep cranking down until it gets really tight. And you can see this shoulder here is very compressed now. Around that edge, it's very tight. And that's really what you want. The beauty of doing it like this, folks, is you're using spanners. And the reason that's a good thing is because when you put bolts into this thing, you're going to be using spanners and ratchets as well. So you'll get a real feel for the tension rather than using something that's like a pistol grip or, a, you know, a sort of a lever action. You don't really get to feel the tension. So, you know, basically, if you've got this tighter with a spanner than the tension that you would ever use on a spanner to undo a bolt that's in it, you know you're pretty safe with it like that's really tight folks as soon as you loosen your nut off you can then just basically back the tool straight out like so and you're ready to go with your next one and there it is folks so it's the big one that we just did it's seated beautifully it's squashed down you can see it's pretty much embedded itself into the aluminium there this is another one with a really flat head on it compared to this one here and uh it's just really really good uh that guy isn't coming out if you put a nut in that even if you really crank down on it i reckon when you release it, it you are not going to turn the rib nut but you just honestly don't know with the other tools folks that you use you really can't gauge the spanner tightness um, of bolts and stuff that are going to be in and without using spanners I reckon anyway folks there you go riv nuts and riv nut tools simple tool to make folks simple bloody tool to make I've been looking everywhere on the internet I've had a few of you guys inquire about uh, about this guy where I got it from and uh, I just can't find him anymore I'm pretty sure there was a guy on eBay uh, in Australia that was just making them out of his shed or something like that and that was years and years ago and he probably just stopped making them Chinese haven't copied them yet which is surprising but um, yeah there you go folks she's all done 8mm rib nut tool 
And that signifies the end of the video. I hope you uh, were able to get a little bit of something out of making this rivnut tool, whether or not you can make one yourself, or you could get someone to make one for you, or fashion up something similar. It doesn't even have to be the same. See if you can make a better one. And, um, yeah, just enjoy yourself out in your shed, guys. So, as always, folks, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and I'll bloody well see you on the next one. Cheers.